Hey, thank you for listening to the Respect the Man podcast. Today we have a special guest, Larry Hegner. He is founder of The Dad Edge. His mission is to empower men to live and lead legendary lives by creating legendary marriages, epic connections with our kids, mastering personal finance and optimizing health and becoming leaders within their family. Welcome to the show, Larry. It's such a pleasure to have you. What's going on? Uh, thank you so much for that uh, for that humble bio. Um, I appreciate that. I love, love, love your mission. And I, I absolutely just love that you include your kids in like everything that you do. I was looking at your Instagram last night and saw the pictures of your boys and you guys are working out and like, it's funny and <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, we, uh, so yeah, four boys. Um, and yeah, I, I work out with my 14 year old every day. Um, he's uh he's actually in the process right now he's this weekend as as we speak um he's training for a bodybuilding show oh no way yeah yeah that's awesome does he do sports in school as well he does football he's played football for the past five years Mm -hmm. um he's in eighth grade uh this will be obviously he's going into freshman year but yeah he's like a little athlete fitness guy loves Mm -hmm. fitness so yeah but he's he's just one of four um, four, four boys. So, which is like, it's, you know, a lot of people ask me, they're like, what's it like raising four boys? I was like, best way I can describe it is think of a fraternity party that you never left. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what it's like. Oh, I, I mean, I gotta say, I love my daughter, but my boys are just the heartbeat of my life. I lo- I'd rather, I'd take four boys over four girls any day. <laughs> I've heard that a time or two. I've heard that. How many boys do you have? Two. You have yeah, two. two. Yeah. Uh, 16. And then my other one will be 20 next month. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, so crazy. I, I feel like I got one out the door. <laughs> he lives yeah. with his girlfriend and they, you know, has a good job. I'm like, yeah, I did it with him. And now this next one, I'm like, ah, oh, the next two years of high school. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know, two years, he'll probably be moving on to something else. I know he's my kid that I'm just like, I don't really know what he's going to end up doing, but maybe be a lifeguard on the beach in San Diego. And I will just be a proud mom. I don't know. <laughs> he's Doesn't just that like kid. Bad, like he's just the butterfly, he just whatever. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, Hey, it doesn't, that doesn't actually sound like a bad life. So I remember when he was like four and we pulled up to the Hamilton aquatic center out in here in Arizona and he looked up and he goes, I know what I want to be when I grow up. And I was like, what's that Mason? He goes, a lifeguard, like one of those. And I was like, okay, <laughs> if you want to be cool. that, that's your dream job. <laughs> so you have a Mason. Yes. My, my 14 year old, the one that I was talking to you, talking to you about, he's Mason as oh, well. Yeah. And, and my Mason is 16. So it was a, must've been a really popular name back then. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, speaking of boys, let's talk about the topic of how do you talk to your teens about sex and you know facing those those questions and things in high school grade yeah, school you, even now great school yeah <laughs> grade school even now um mm. you know that, that's that's an interesting topic because um one thing that we've done obviously so we we've got you know 16 14 and then eight and six and the the interesting thing about it is like i i need to start having the conversation now with my eight-year-old because mm. i can tell like he's you know he's almost nine you know he's I think he kind of understands like his body and that kind of thing, his body's doing different things. So like I started mm-hmm. talking to the older two, like right around eight, eight or nine years old, but yeah, you know, it's, um, we, I, I I've had, I, I honestly believe that, that, that the conversation needs to be an ongoing conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's never a one and done. And, um, you know, I, I really, I don't mind talking to them about it because, um, so luckily with what I do, you know, being a part of, you know, obviously hosting dad edge, um, I've, I've gotten to learn like some really cool skills as it relates to talking to my kids and making them feel safe. So like one of the biggest things that I think men can learn is how to create an environment of psychological safety with your kids. In other words, Mm -hmm. we can talk about things, we can do things without blame, shame, pain, guilt, all these things, right? Right. That's the one um, thing I found is that you have to learn that your kids are not going to have the same values that maybe you have about sexuality. Right. And And you're going to have to meet them where they're at and have those open conversations. Otherwise they do feel judged or shamed or shut. They'll shut down. Right. 
And, and that's, that's the thing. That's what I never want. Right. So I think there, there are some things that you can do. Right. So like, um, the first time I ever talked to my oldest about porn, so we can, we can even start there if you want. Sure. So, um, I, Dad Edge partners with an organization called Bark. Bark is a, uh, it's one of our partners. It's one of our sponsors. Bark mm -hmm. is an app that you can put on your kids' phones or devices or whatever. And what it does is it detects keywords around anxiety, depression, drug use, alcohol, medically concerning content, and even adult searches. So, um, you know, for, this was, this was a few years ago when my oldest was searching a couple things on the internet and I got a bark alert, right? I got a bark alert letting me know that he was Googling some things. And so I will never forget the first time I was caught with porn as a kid. I mean, my mom basically told me I was going to hell. Like there yeah. was so much guilt, so much shame. Like you just didn't even, I didn't want to face my mom after she caught me with porn. And I, I think that that's the wrong way to go because basically what you're doing is you're setting the stage of like, Hey, I am not the one that you, that you talk about this stuff with. And it, mm -hmm. I, I want the opposite. Mm -hmm. So there, there are ways to create an environment of psychological safety. And I'll, I'll, I'll go through that mm -hmm. first. Number one, you know, I, I think you could easily go to your son and get nose to nose, toes to toes facing him saying, Hey man, um, I got a bark alert about you searching some adult content. What's up with that? Right. I'm not going to do that. Instead. <laughs> Instant judgment. Uh, right. <laughs> instead, I like to keep the conversation very light. Right. And, and here's how it went for us. So I, you know, I, I saw the adult search and I'm like, huh, okay, I guess, I guess we're definitely at that age. And he got home from school that day. I'm like, Hey man, I was like, uh, you want to go get a Sonic soda? He loves going to Sonic and getting like all his mm -hmm. mixtures of sodas. And he's like, yeah, it'd be great. So when you create an environment of psychological safety, it's always, it's always a fantastic thing to be side by side with your kid. Mm -hmm. You can be walking with them, driving with them or whatever, but not nose to nose, toes to toes, just too much for them. And I like to keep those conversations light, almost kind of humorous in a way. So we're pulling out of our driveway and I'm like, so I was like, find anything good on the internet lately? <laughs> and he goes, and I he can goes, just see the smirk on his face right now. And I've never even seen it. <laughs> oh man. So he literally did this. He was just like, it, yeah. You know, he had this big smile on his face and he's like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, I got a bark alert. I'm sure you probably know that. He's like, yeah. He's like, and I was like, First of all, I was like, let's talk about this if you're cool with it. And he's like, yeah, I'm cool with it. I was like, first of all, you're totally normal. Okay, so let's start there. You're doing what every other, at the time he was 14. I was like, you're doing what every other 14 year old is curious about. Like, so let's normalize it. Okay, you're not a weirdo or a sicko or anything like but that. But let's normalize it in a way that it's not every man's battle because just as many teen girls are looking at porn. Yeah which is crazy, right? It is not every man's battle. And unfortunately, what you tell your kids they are, they become. And so yeah. they think if I'm looking at porn, this is a man thing. I'm a man, I'm a man. It's not every man's battle. It's our daughters as well. I can't even remember the, the statistics. I had a guy come on the podcast once and gave the statistics of, you know, I think it's 82% of boys will see porn by the time they're 10. But I think it's like... 40% of teenage girls view porn on a regular basis. It's like something like that. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, something like that. Yes. And there's statistics shown that boys masturbate more frequently, but girls are masturbating younger. And by the age of 17, 58% of girls have masturbated and 80% of boys have masturbated. And the, there's not a huge discrepancy there. It's true. You know, I did not know that. Mm. That's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really just normalizing you know, the conversation. And I'm like, Hey, you know, you're, you're not doing anything that other boys aren't doing. I was like, but I was like, it is my job though, as your dad to guide you through this. Right. And I was like, and I think that there's some things that you might want to know that you probably don't know that are going to impact you later on in life. If you keep, if you keep doing this and he's like, okay, like what? I was like, well, I was like, first of all, I was like, you know, you're going to view women a bit differently you know, if you're constantly looking at porn, 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, and, and you really don't want that, right? You, 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 you don't want to look at women as, as objects, right? You want to look at women as human beings, right? 